Hello and welcome to Vision Academy. My name is Hanmant Ladwa and in this video we are going to write a C program to find the sum of two matrix. Let us write the preprocessor directives hash include in angular brace I will write standard input output dot h header file and the next preprocessor directive is hash include in angular brace we will write console input output dot h header file. Now let us write wide main function and curly open brace here I am going to declare all the necessary variables which are to be used in the program. I am going to write the data type int and I am going to take one matrix called A of size 10 and 10 and one more matrix of size 10 and 10 that is called B and I will take one more matrix of size 10 and 10 that is sum. So here A is two dimensional array, B is two dimensional array and S is also two dimensional array. Here A plus B will be added and it will be stored in one more uh, array variable. Next I am going to use the subscript variables I and J and after that I am going to write R1 comma C1. So this is row of the first matrix and column of the second matrix. Next similarly R2 and C2. So it is row of the second matrix and column of the second matrix. Now let us uh, ask the user to enter the order of matrix. So we will write here first CLR SCR. So that is used to clear the screen and next here I am going to write printf statement in a double quotation mark I am going to ask the user to enter the order of the first matrix. So put colon backward slash n and the double quotation mark and semicolon and now I am going to receive the response from the user through keyboard using scanf statement. Here in a double quotation mark I will write percentage d and percentage d and the double quotation mark put comma and here order is number of rows and number of columns of the first matrix. Here I am going to write ampersand of r1 comma ampersand of c1 and put semicolon. Now we will ask the user to enter the order of second matrix. So in a printf statement, in a double quotation mark, I am going to write enter the order of the second matrix. So colon backward slash n and the double quotation mark and semicolon. Next we will write scanf percentage d percentage d format specifier and the double quotation mark put comma and next we are going to take r2 and c2 so ampersand of r2 comma ampersand of c2 and put semicolon now we have to check whether the entered matrices are having the equal number of rows and columns or not if it is not then we will not be able to uh, add the elements so here addition of two matrices can be done for example I am going to write A is equal to if we have order 2 into 2 so this is A and one more matrix of order 2 into 2 that is elements consisting of 5, 6, 7, 8 then the corresponding elements will be added that is 1 plus 5 so that will be stored in S so here I am going to write 1 plus 5 is 1 plus 5 then 2 plus 6 so this corresponding element will be added next corresponding 3 plus 7 will be added 4 plus 8 will be added and the resultant matrix will be 1 plus 5 is 6 2 plus 6 is 8 3 plus 7 is 10 and 4 plus 12 is 2 is sorry 4 plus 8 is 12 so this is how we will be able to add two matrices of the same order if the order is different then the corresponding elements cannot be added. So we have to check this condition after receiving the order of first and second matrix. Now I am going to write if R1 is equal to R2 and I will take AND operator. So for that again I am going to put one more open bracket that is logical AND. Here I am going to write C1 is equal to C2. Here if the row 1 is equal to that is uh, row of first matrix is equal to row of second matrix and column of first matrix is equal to column of second matrix then only the addition of two matrices is possible. So here I am going to write curly open brace and if this condition is true then we will ask the user to enter the elements of 
first matrix in a printf statement. I'm going to write printf in a double quotation mark. I'm going to write enter the elements of first matrix. So here I'm going to write backward slash n and put semicolon. So we are going to receive uh, the elements one by one using for loop. For I'll write i is equal to zero. I is less than uh, row one. Okay, semicolon i plus plus. The next for loop for j is equal to zero. J is less than column one. J plus plus. That is column C one means what? It is the column of first matrix. Okay, that is the meaning of it. Next we'll receive the elements using scanf statement. In a double quotation mark, I'll write percentage D, end the double quotation mark, put comma. Here I'm going to write ampersand of A of I, J, and put semicolon. After receiving this, once again, we have to ask the user to enter the elements of the second matrix this time, right? Yes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write printf statement. In a double quotation mark, I'll write enter the elements of second matrix so backward slash n and the double quotation mark and put semicolon so we'll use for i is equal to zero i is less than this time we have to write r2 that is row of second matrix then i plus plus the next for loop for j is equal to zero j is less than column next j plus plus so once again we are going to receive the elements from the user through keyboard using scanf statement in a double quotation mark we'll write percentage d put comma ampersand this time we are going to write b of i j and put a semicolon here right so after receiving this i have to perform addition right so i have to perform addition and save it to the third array okay so let me write again for loop for i is equal to zero i is less than r1 i plus plus one more for loop for j is equal to zero j is less than c1 and put comma semicolon j plus plus now so we have to perform addition for that i'm going to write s of i j that is sum sum of i j is equal to a of i j plus b of i j and put semicolon now we are going to write print f in a double quotation mark we'll write the resultant matrix is the resultant matrix is backward slash n and the double quotation mark and put semicolon here using for loop we are going to print the elements stored in s of i j so here i'll write for i is equal to zero i is less than r1 and i plus plus and curly open brace and next for loop for j is equal to zero j is less than c1 and put semicolon j plus plus and here i'm going to write printf statement printf in a double quotation mark i'll write percentage t backward slash t is used for providing the horizontal tab space so end the double quotation mark put comma and here i'm going to print the value stored in s of i j and put semicolon after this i'm going to write printf statement in a double quotation mark backward slash n and put semicolon and now closing brace for this for loop and next one more closing brace for this particular if statement here you can see so for this opening we have to put one more closing brace for if statement so after this after else if else part is to be checked right so here we'll write printf uh, matrices are not compatible if the number of rows and columns are different then it has to print this particular statement so matrices are not compatible so end the double quotation mark and put semicolon and then we'll write get ch function and curly closing brace for main function now uh, let us uh, take an example here once we compile and run the program it will ask the user to enter the order of 
the first matrix here i'm going to write output uh, it will ask the user to enter the order of the first matrix okay next here r1 is going to receive for example i'm going to enter 2 and 2 so next 2 will be received by the variable c1 next again it is going to ask the user to enter the order of second matrix all right enter the order of the second matrix so because of this backward slash and cursor come down to the next line i'm going to enter again 2 and 2 so this 2 will be stored in r2 and the next 2 will be stored in c2 okay yes next we are going to check this condition if r1 is equal to r2 here r1 is equal to r2 because 2 is equal to 2 hence this is true next we have to check column 1 is equal to column 2 so column 1 is equal to column 2 that is column of first matrix is equal to column of second matrix yes this is also true true and true always results in true once this condition is true then the control enters into the body of if statement and it is going to execute the remaining uh, statements now it is going to ask the user to enter the elements of first matrix all right here enter the elements of first matrix so for example i'm going to enter one two three and four yes so this is a okay so it will be mapped in a memory something like this so index number 0 1 and this is 0 1 right yes so after this scanf statement we have received elements four elements and it is in the form of uh, matrix next it will ask the user to enter the elements of second matrix correct yes so now it is going to print enter the elements of second matrix so next i'm going to enter for example 5 6 7 and 8 so it will be mapped in a memory something like this okay so index number 0 1 0 1 and this is matrix b okay so just because of this scanf statement we have received all the elements so next here you can see we need to perform the addition operation so that is performing addition of elements of the corresponding elements of both a and b matrices okay so here for the first time i is equal to 0 j is equal to 0 here s of ij so how to represent s of ij so let me take somewhere here so that we can clearly see it yes okay fine so here you can see s of 0 0 let me write here s of ij means 0 0 is equal to a of jj is ij is 0 0 so that is a of 0 a of 0 plus similarly b of 0 and 0 so here s of 0 0 is equated with value a of 0 0 a of 0 0 consisting of what here you can see a of 0 0 consisting 1 so here 1 plus b of 0 0 here b of 0 0 0 0 consisting of 5 so 1 plus 5 is equal to 6 will be saved in s of 0 0 right so let me write yes and here we have got one more matrix that is result will be stored in sum okay whose index number is 0 1 0 1 so s of 0 0 s of 0 0 consisting of what 6 will be stored correct yes fine next again here you can see the control transfers to inner for loop by incrementing the value of j by 1 i is 0 j is 1 now we will write s of i is 0 j is 1 is equal to a of 0 1 plus b of 0 1 so s of 0 1 is equal to a of 0 1 consisting of what a of 0 1 consisting of 2 right so i'll write 2 this plus as it is b of 0 1 here b of 0 1 consisting of what 6 correct so here i'm going to write 
6. This is equal to 8. 8 will be stored in S of 0, 1. S of, here you can see, S of 0, 1 will hold 8. Yes. Okay. So again, here, control transfers to inner for loop by incrementing the value of J by 1. Correct. Now, J value is 2. 2 is less than 2. No. Condition fails. Then, the control transfers to outer for loop by incrementing the value of i by 1. Now, i is pointing to what? i is pointing to 1. Okay. So, i is 1, j is 0. Here, I am going to write s of 1 because of this. s of i is 1, j is 0. So, a of 1, 0 plus b of i is 1 and b is 0. So, s of 1, 0 is equal to a of 1, 0 consisting of what? a of 1, 0 consisting of value 3. So, here I am going to write 3 plus. So, b of 1, 0. b of 1, 0 consisting of 7. So, 3 plus 7 is 10. So, 10 is stored in s of 1, 0. It will be stored it will be stored in S of 1, 0. So, it will be here it is going to store, right? Yes. Okay, fine. Next, here again, the control transfers to inner for loop by incrementing the value of J by 1. I value was 1, J value is 1. Next, S of IJ is S of 1, 1. S of 1, 1 is equal to A of IJ is A of 1, 1. Similarly, B of IJ is B of 1, 1. Next, S of 1, 1 is equal to A of 1, 1 consisting of what? A of 1, 1 consisting of value 4 plus B of 1, 1. B of, here you can see B of 1, 1 consisting of 8. So, here I will write 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 has to be stored in S of 1, 1. So, S of 1, 1 must have 12. So, now, this particular matrix is stored in S of i, j. So, using this for loop and this for loop, we are printing this particular matrix. So, which results in 6, 8, 10 and 12. Let us compile and run this program. For that, I will take you to my laptop screen. Here you can see I have already written this program in Turbo C++ compiler to save your time. Let us compile this program by pressing Alt F9. Here it is showing success. That means there is no syntax error. I will press enter. Now let us run this program by pressing Ctrl F9. Here it is asking the user to enter the order of first matrix. For example, I am going to enter two rows, two columns. Now it is asking enter the order of second matrix. Here also I am going to enter two rows and two columns and press enter. Now it is asking the user to enter the elements of first matrix. For example, I am going to enter 1, 2, 3, 4. Next, the, uh, enter the elements of second matrix. 5, 6, 7, 8 and then enter. So, the resultant matrix is 6, 8, 10 and 12. Here you can clearly see that the corresponding elements of both the matrix are added and the resultant matrix is shown. So, let me compile and run this program one more time by pressing Ctrl F9 and now we are going to enter the different order of the matrix. For example, here I am going to enter two rows, two columns for the first matrix and for the second matrix I am going to enter two rows, three columns. If I do so, then it should show matrices are not compatible and now I am going to press enter. Here you can see the matrices are not compatible. I hope you understood this program. If so, please write down in the comment box as understood. Thank you.